This video is sponsored by Dragon City. More on that later. What's happening? I'm back. <sighs> Guys, I had a late start this morning. I'm feeling pretty rough. I know some of you are too. I know everyone's starting school today. Not me, obviously. I don't have to do that because I'm smart enough. And even though I wasn't feeling too hot today, you know I had to throw on my John Cena outfit. I'm about to give the five knuckle shuffle to some steamy hot drama today. And listen, I know last week was an exciting week, okay? It was filled with a bunch of white boys getting outed for being freaks. We had Roger Clay, the old freak. We had Ben Tellect, the laughing freak. And then we also had the Linus Tech Tips drama, which was like some nerd freak drama that is so complex and crazy. I did not have time to touch on all of that. But my brother did decide to do a video on it. Look, He's my, bro my brother, and he talked about the Linus stuff for like two hours, and it is crazy. I will probably do a He Said Us video kind of talking about my feelings on the whole thing later this week, but if you want to hear about it, I'll leave the link in the description. I love nepotism, but don't worry. I know I said white boys a few times, and you guys probably freaked out thinking there was another one that I was about to out for being a freak, but no, we're going back to classic Green is Not Nick drama for some niche TikTok content. Niche TikTok beef is what I'm best at, baby. And although all these people that we talk about continue to post on TikTok, you got Ashley Gavin still doing comedy sets. You got Ben Tellect still laughing at the same dumb jokes. You even have Montaigne trying to make jokes about cut day board and people are not having it. Percent men that comment cut a board on my videos. You comment that you're a cut a boy. You're my son. But no, we're not talking about any of that. Today we are talking about drama on purse talk. We're talking about purse gate. Who would have thought we'd end up on this corner of TikTok? Every week you don't know where Green is Not Nick is going. But I'm excited to tell you where this beef goes because it goes even further than I have even had time to look at. But I'm going to give you the rundown right now and tell you what it's all about. There's this girl named Emily on TikTok who posted a video about a bad customer service experience she had while trying to buy a purse. So I have been looking for one of those LV fringe bags for a couple weeks. I did my due diligence, clearly not enough, on TikTok. And then I went to Facebook, joined a group, and bought one. Yes, she talks about how she wants this LV fringe bag, this Louis Vuitton fringe bag. And I'm not a purse guy, okay? I don't have enough belongings where, where I need a purse. I feel like there's like four tiers. You've got pockets. You know, when I don't have enough stuff to carry around, I just go pocket mode. It's not a big deal. Now, tier number two, if I have like some extra stuff that I got to carry, I go crossbody. I gotta go crossbody. Now this is where it's interesting. When you go bigger than crossbody, when I got more stuff than that, I go to backpack. Some people go to purse at that moment, but I don't, it's not my thing. I don't look good in a purse. So I go backpack mode. And then if you get even higher than that, you go to luggage, right? You hear what I'm saying? All of that to say, <laughs> I look up Louis Vuitton fringe purse. So I can see what we're talking about. Cause again, I'm not a purse guy. And I pull this up and guys, I, Oh man, I am an independent news source. I'm not owned by anyone. I don't have anyone giving me an agenda that I have to push on to you guys. But I will say, I don't like these bags. I think they're really ugly. And I think it's like more of a Southern women thing. I don't think it's really meant for a Midwest boy like me. But the fringe thing is not for me. I think in certain cases, I like it. You know, I like the sparkly outfits, the little Nas X fringe type cowboy situation. I love the cowboy stuff. This, I, it's, I think it's a little bit past, past my own, you know, my own tastes. I mean, you, you might have to pay me to promote something like this. Speaking of that, I think before we get going on this story and see just how crazy this purse stuff gets, let's talk about our sponsor, Dragon City. Hey man, could you come in the living room with me real quick and play Dragon City with me? What are you dragging? No, you silly goose. It's Dragon City. It's this awesome app I have where you can create a dragon empire. You can hatch, you can collect, you can evolve over 1,000 unique dragons, and they actually sponsored today's video. What video? I mean, that sounds all right, but I doubt that you can construct and build your city with, with magical, magical habitats, habitats buildings, buildings, and decorations. And decorations? Yes! It has it all! 
No way, man. This is too good to be true. It does stink that we can't engage in epic PvP battles with other Dragon Masters, though. Actually, you can. Dragon City gives you the opportunity to fight so many different battles with your dragons. I mean, you couldn't even fathom the possibilities. Oh my gosh, this game's got everything. Tell me all the information I need to know to get it. I mean, it really does. That's why Dragon City has such a vibrant community of players who collaborate together to win exclusive rewards, dude. And all you have to do to get the app is click the link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen and you get all this cool stuff. You get 15,000 food, 30,000 gold, and the very rare, I mean, come on, the, the very rare Neo Azumi Dragon. Are you gonna, are you gonna, you're not gonna get it after you hear that you get the Neo Yazumi Dragon? What? Anyways, I'll see you in another room to play Dragon City. Thanks, Dragon City, for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the drama. Thank you, Dragon City Nick, for the great sponsor segment. Let's move on with the drama. So Emily posts this TikTok, right? She talks about how she wants the Louis Vuitton fringe bag and how she was trying to find it on TikTok, couldn't find it, goes to a Facebook group and buys one of these bags from a purse selling Facebook group, I guess. So she shows the receipt for this bag. It's called a Feathered Dreams bag. She bought it for $55. And even though the receipt makes it look like she definitely bought it from a very, you know, homegrown DIY grassroots indie Facebook purse lady, you know, that's the receipt. That's what a receipt's for, okay? I don't care if it looks like that. You still have proof of purchase. And Emily says she bought it from this company called Westernique, which is owned by th this lady right here. And um, she is sort of the center of this <laughs> entire story. But let's continue. Now, this TikTok was posted on August 9th. Emily says that she bought this purse on June 10th. You know, she shows the order receipt saying the order was placed, but there was no indication that it was ever shipped out, no indication that it has been delivered, nothing. Now, it's been two months, and Emily is not asked about the purse. Um, apparently, two months later, August 9th, this purse lady posts on her Facebook group saying that the bags are going to be sent out just a couple days later. She puts out a Facebook post and tags everybody and says that bags are going out Thursday and Friday. And you might be wondering, June 10th, August 9th, this is over two months until the shipping, what's going on? And Emily was confused as well. She said after the first six weeks, she was pretty confused. Bought it on June 10th, a month and a half later, still wondering where it is. But she said she didn't want to say anything because she saw other women asking the purse lady when their purses would be delivered and saw that the purse lady was blocking everybody who was asking about whether or not this purse was going to get sent out. Once the six week passed, I've been kind of like getting a little bit irritated, but I didn't want to reach out because I noticed that when other people reach out, she bans them from the group, blocks them, whatever. Emily did not want to get blocked, so she didn't send a message. She didn't complain, just waited. Now, purse lady makes the post on Facebook and says that the bags are about to be sent out a couple days later. Emily decides to comment and ask very nicely when they're gonna get the tracking info for the purses. And so when she makes a post on Wednesday, the 9th, um, I comment on, I say, hey, when will we get tra tracking? Will it be to our email? Purse lady says that they should get an email and if they don't get an automatic email saying that the purses are sent out, then Emily should email her directly. Emily should email purse lady. August 9th was a few days before. That's when purse lady said the purse would get sent out. Now it's August 12th. And there's still no indication of the purse being sent out. There's no tracking link. There's no notification. There's no signs anywhere that the purse is coming. And this is literally three days after the post saying that they were about to get sent out. So Emily decides, hey, listen, it's been over two months. She thinks she's going to nicely ask for a refund. And she shows that one of the rules on the Facebook group under refunds says, in all caps, no refunds will be given unless bags are damaged during shipping or TAT is passed. Refunds will be given if turnaround time is passed, which in her group I had always seen 12 to 27 business days. And at this point, we are 45 business days, nine weeks past the day I bought it. And so she sends an email to the purse lady, says, hello, my name is Emily. I bought a bag on June 10th. This is my order number. It's been 45 business days and I haven't received an update 
or a tracking number at this time i would like a refund and emily is very surprised when the purse lady who i think goes by the name lydia in her email it's the lady which is apparently her name backwards but she goes by all these different names she has a tiktok account where her name's like paisley she's lydia and another one she's got she's got like four or five different alter egos this is a goddamn criminal we got on our hands if you know what i'm saying so to Emily's surprise, Lydia responds and says, I don't give refunds. And as stated in the group, bags shipped yesterday. If you would read. A little bit rude. Not a lot of uh, professionalism in the email there. But hey, you know, I don't subscribe by uh, American traditions. You don't need to be posh and polite to every person that comes your way. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I think this is a little bit, this is a little bit beyond okay. All right. Obviously, Emily didn't get any indication that the bags shipped. She said they were shipped out. There were no receipts, nothing. So Emily was like, okay, I don't really, I think I might be getting scammed here. Let me get my refund. Emily responds and she says, I asked if you would email me with tracking and you said, most likely your customer service is disgusting. I'll get a refund through my bank. Now, Emily originally said that Lydia said that she would either automatically get a tracking or that she should email Lydia herself and then she'll send the tracking information. Now, this is the email that Emily is sending to her, so I would assume that she would respond with her tracking info immediately rather than just saying that the bags have been shipped out. But instead, she replies to this email and says, that's fine, I'll sue you, since you clearly didn't read my group rules. Very normal response, she's going with the Bentelect route of dealing with her haters. Emily comes right back, she says, your group rules state that a refund would be given if you haven't received your item by the turnaround time. I asked for tracking and was told it would be emailed to me, I was never updated. Tracking through shop was not updated either, it's been past the turnaround time, tell your lawyer to contact me. Woo. Lydia shoots right back. She says, will do. I clearly posted bags were shipping Friday. If you can't read, that's on you. And Emily did bring up that she said this, but she also said that they would be getting the tracking information or that she would have the tracking information. Still haven't seen any tracking information. Emily says she can read. She didn't get tracking. It's been well past the turnaround time. Emily adds, you have the grammar of a teenager. I don't think you have the right to tell anyone else they can't read. If you would have sent me the tracking number, this would have been solved. I asked for a refund because it's past the turnaround time. Didn't receive a tracking number. Your lack of customer service will ruin your business. Bang, sends it out. And this culminates into Lydia responding to Emily and just saying, Just drops the mic there, you know? Even adds a couple emojis into the email. I think this is some good old fashioned small business advice. This is how you respond to your customers if they ask for some stupid shit like tracking information. Why are you asking for that stuff? It's boring. Just wait for the purse lady. Only kidding, only kidding. So then the purse lady, Lydia, responds to the TikTok made by Emily. And at this point, Lydia's TikTok has been fully deleted at the culmination of this story. So we really are only looking at this through the lens of Emily responding to her comments. But basically, Emily responds to one of her comments in a TikTok. The, the comment says right here, you literally asked for a refund of $105 and I declined because no ma'am, that's way more than your order. Obviously, if we head back towards the beginning, Emily shows her receipt saying that she paid like 55 bucks or something like that for the purse. It was obviously not $105, but hey, I don't, I don't know. Maybe there was a hidden email that Emily didn't talk about where she asked for this refund of $105. And let's see what Emily has to say about that. So now Miss Lydia Lee is lying yet again and saying that I asked for a refund of $105.50. So let's revisit the emails. This is what I said verbatim. Where did I ask for a refund of $105.50? Post it. You're disgusting, you're vile, and you're a liar. And you're sleazy. Boom. So, that's, that's where we're at. Lydia doesn't come forward with any of the information, of course. There's no tracking number. There's no proof that she asked for $100. I don't know where she got that from. But Lydia makes her own TikTok saying that Emily sent her an email that day harassing and threatening her over the purse. She literally emailed me today harassing me and threatening me. We obviously don't see any emails or proof from Lydia that Emily is sending these crazy emails, but 
Emily responds and shows up with some evidence of her own. She first shows an email that came from Lydia saying, I wonder if you can run your mouth from underground. Shrug emoji. Can you? Are you able to do that? Can you run it? Can you jog it? She shows another email to Emily from Lydia saying, Go drink some bleach and do everyone around you a favor. You're weirdly obsessed. It's probably all the mess your mother did while pregnant. You lack brain cells. We do learn later in the story that Lydia has a whole ass family. She's got a kid and a man too. Lydia also sends her an email saying, sweetie, I will fucking pull up at your house and drag your ass. You got the right one. Which is kind of the crazy thing about these customer service stories is that Lydia does have Emily's address because she bought something from her. She knows where she lives. So this is kind of where things take a little bit of a dark turn because it's like, now we have people threatening to pull up to someone else's house and like, pow, pow, pow. So then she posts a string of emails, but one that mainly says, you probably should post lies and false accusations on someone who has your address. Just saying, shrug emoji. Now I'm gonna say that I think Lydia meant to say you probably shouldn't post lies and false accusations on someone who has your address. I think that was a pretty obvious mistake. I don't know why she didn't do spell check on that, but it's fine. But when we look at this photo and we go higher up, we can see the beginning of some of these emails, one of which is Emily posting a link to a file saying this you for identity theft <laughs> and talks about how she's got all these different names and in the next shot has a mugshot of Lydia as the green screen background. She literally goes and figures out that this woman is a felon for identity theft. I, I can't find any more information on this, but she literally has the mug shots. She really digs in. Shout out to Emily here. This stuff is crazy. I love the drama. The drama. I love calling it drama as if it's not like someone literally threatening someone that they're gonna like show up to their house. And Lydia makes all these claims to which Emily says, dude, just show the proof show proof of me harassing and threatening you because emily came with the proof emily came with the mugshot photo she's not playing around now lydia said that emily didn't get a tracking number because she never reached out like lydia originally said in the original post emily mentions that lydia said you either will get the tracking information or you can email me to get it and lydia says that emily never reached out like she said but obviously she did reach out in the email asking for the refund. That should have been the email where you send the tracking number. I feel like that's pretty obvious, but I think we're having trouble with the communication here. Good thing communication isn't important at all when you're running a business where you have to run your own customer service. Now, Emily shows the proof here by saying, will tracking be sent to our email? This is from the original post. And Lydia says, most likely it will be sent to your email since I can't send messages or you can email with a photo of your bag and address and I can send tracking that way. Emily responds and says, okay, I'll just wait for it, thanks. Now, I guess Lydia's case here is that Emily should have sent another email saying that she didn't get it and asking for the tracking number. But again, she sent you an email asking for a refund. Just email her back with the tracking number if you already sent the purse out. And Lydia says that she couldn't have emailed Emily because she doesn't know her email. How do you not know the email of someone who ordered an item from you? Do you not have to put in your email when you order a, a purse from you? Or is it all through Facebook? And even if it's through Facebook, isn't your email attached to that? Am I going crazy? Now, Lydia claims in her video that the turnaround time was 25 to 48 days. Emily claims that there was no specified turnaround time on that bag, but similar bags on Lydia's site said that the turnaround time is 12 to 27 days. Actually, turnaround time listed on the bag that she purchased was 25 to 48 days. Actually, the bag that I purchased didn't have a turnaround time specifically listed on it. However, other bags like it was up to 12 to 27 days. Now, mind you, I waited 45 business days. That is like 70 days, way more than 48. If she knew how to talk to customers, we would not be in this situation. If she knew how to communicate with her customers, we would not be in this situation. 
And she also claims that I asked for a refund of $105, which I didn't. I clearly posted what I paid. But anyways, hopefully this is the last video, and if you guys have any questions, let me know. Now, a couple days later, Lydia posts a screenshot on TikTok saying that she sent the bat. And it states that it was left on her front doorstep at 12 12 today but the screenshot says that she sent the bag on the 14th and it arrived to emily's house on the 15th but obviously this date doesn't line up with the original post which said that they were going to be sent out i think on august 10th or 11th so obviously it was sent off after all of this drama and Emily shows that she got no packages. There was no proof of anything happening. She may have sent it off somewhere. She may have sent off some product on the 14th, and it may have arrived to some place on the 15th, but it, well, there's no proof that it was the bag or that it went to Emily's house or anything. And, and Emily also says this. Y'all, they had my other account banned because I posted that girl's address with her tracking number. Bet you you won't come for me again, though. Oh my gosh, that's that's awesome. So we've got the doxing accusations confirmed. That That is all true. <laughs> and Emily also brings up that Lydia DM'd some other customer who was a military vet and sent her a message that said, fat ass ho, what, what is this? Is this like a serving emoji? I'm serving or something? What is, is this like a half shrug? Fat ass ho, half shrug, yikes, you are a vet. Too bad you didn't get shot up. The purse drama really gets bad fast. And so Emily starts posting about other stories that people have working with Lydia, and it leads to Lydia herself posting this video about Emily, which because her account was already taken down, Emily reposted again. Since this girl is so obsessed with me, do y'all think she would like a pair of my underwear? You guys, this is a business owner. Let's not forget that. And I'm gonna go ahead and decline your offer. Thank you. What, what? A pair of the underwear? If she can't send the purse in the first place, I don't know how she's gonna get underwear to her. Is there gonna be a tracking link for that? Are you gonna give her the tracking number for that? And so let's watch together an update that Emily posted about the situation now that all of this is starting to subside, I hope. Hi friends, welcome to Purse Gate. I have something to show you. It's even prettier in person. Am I going to get people... Guys, listen. We all have different tastes, you know? I have been... I, I am open to all sorts of styles, right? It may not be my thing right now, but that doesn't mean in the future I'm not going to be into the Louis Vuitton fringe purse. But just, come on, give me a break. Let me know what you guys think about the purse in the comments. So this is actually a vintage boutique that reached out to Emily about getting her this purse. It's a boutique that aims to create crisis counseling groups for women. Seems like a really good thing. I might not dig the purses, but I do think this is very nice. It's wholesome. And um, she got some cool stuff from the vintage place. And it wasn't from Lydia and no one tried to scam and kill her this time. And she I got her purse. I just want to do the rest of See? this video with this on my side, because at this point I have a trauma bond. If writing a wrong that she didn't create with the bag situation wasn't enough for you to support La Vintage Petite Mama, let me show you what else she has. Here we have two cowhide koozies, cute clips. Look at this bodysuit, you guys. <gasps> this necklace. Listen, and then... I can't. I, I literally am wearing the John Cena outfit today. I cannot say anything, okay? I, I don't have the right to talk about fashion. That was a joke. I look awesome. I'm sorry. These people didn't do anything wrong. I, I just think it's funny. I just think it's different. It's different. It's a different whatever. I don't care. So I have a major uh, purse gate update and I wanted to tell you while I was telling them. Okay. Um, so do you know how she like was posting all those videos about me? Mm -hmm. Did you want scrambled eggs? Yeah, I did. Okay. Ow! <laughs> this is something we actually have to talk about. Because one of my favorite channels, Little Joel, you guys know him, you love him. He posted a video about this this trend where these parents are cracking eggs on their kids' heads. And it started all this discourse. A lot of these videos, guys, this one was funny. It was cute. I The ones where the parents are like cracking eggs on their kids' heads and the kids start like crying and they're obviously upset. It, it's so weird. Comes off as super 
like fucked up to me. You know, maybe fucked up's like a, a strong term to use for it. I don't know though. Is it? I don't think it really is. I think it's like weird when parents like crap. I'll show one. I might do a he said us video on this and dive deeper into it, but let me just show you one of these videos. Some of them are very wholesome, but then, you know, let's watch another one of these. Oh, of course, this one's private. This one was taken down. Let me just show you guys the video, okay? Hey, everybody. This one is one of my least favorite ones. I think this is gross. No. Like, what are you doing? Enough. I'll, I'll show you a wholesome one so so we can laugh together, but that one was not fun. Ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the kid gave consent. He knew the egg was coming. It was funny. I'm done talking about the egg stuff. I gotta go back. I'm sorry. Everyone say bye, Joel. Bye, little guy. So then someone posts a TikTok showing that Lydia went live and it says that she exposed her child and leaked her own address in the video. And I saw other TikToks saying that multiple times in the video, she leaks her address. You know, the house that her family lives at. How you about to be crying that people are tracking your IP address, but yet give your address out on live. I'm, why am I reading it like that? You guys know what I'm trying to say. This is like, could go way deeper. I'm sure the deep dive goes way deeper. I think I might step back and back out before things get a little bit too rough. But there's my take on Perskate for you guys. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, leave it a big f freaking thumbs up, I guess. I'll put all my channels up on the screen. You know what it is. I post a lot on here. I post a lot on He Said Us. That's where you can mainly find me. I've got a band called Queef Jerky. You can find us everywhere also. And I'll put some uh, playlists up on the screen of some drama that I've been talking about on He Said Us on this channel. You can go check those videos out. You can go to my Instagram at Nick is not green if you want to reply to some of my stories and tell me what I should talk about. I ask people like a few times a week what stories I should cover. And yeah, I'll link everything else below. I'll link my brother's video to the uh, Linus Tech Tip stuff. And another thank you to Dragon City for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description if you want to go check it out. I think that might be it for me. I hope you guys have a good rest of your week. I hope the people that are starting to go to school have, have a good time at school. All right, stay safe, treat others well, unless they're like this lady. All right, okay, see you guys, bye-bye.